Hello, and welcome to this navigation tutorial in the A10. Before we begin, if you're watching this video on YouTube, please ensure subtitles and annotations are switched on. This video may have them to highlight things I'd want you to see. Secondly, this tutorial also assumes you have basic cockpit orientation and know how to get airborne, basically everything covered in the first two tutorials. If you're unsure, I suggest you check that out before viewing this tutorial. OK, let's get started. Today we're going to be looking at navigation, and there's no point in having a target to destroy if you don't know how to get to it, and there's a lot more to navigation than simply pointing your nose in the right direction and flying until you get there. Sometimes, if the terrain is mountainous and you're at low altitude, or if you're deep behind enemy lines, you'll have a set specific waypoints to follow. Being able to fly between these waypoints on a specific course will help you get from getting swatted out of the sky by enemy sounds, or crashing into a mountain when you're supposed to be flying through a valley at night. We'll be using the HSI primarily for navigation, as it's the most accurate and has the most information. We'll also be taking a look at the HUD, as it contains the navigation and heading information that's useful. Right, let's get airborne. Run, request takeoff. Run, request takeoff. Enfield 1-1, one, one, tower. Enfield 1-1, one, one, tower. You are cleared for takeoff. Let's take a look at the HSI and its features. The HSI displays information regarding both the direction to the next waypoint and also the course line you should be en route to that waypoint. This mark here will always point to the next waypoint. You'll notice currently it's at the top of the HSI, indicating we're flying directly towards it. If it were not pointing directly up, then we'd need to turn until it was. You'll see this in action in a moment when we've reached the next waypoint. This line here is the course line. As I mentioned, pointing your nose in the right direction often isn't enough. Sometimes you'll be required to fly a specific course between waypoints. If this line is centred, as it is now, you're on the correct course. If it were off to the left or right of the centre, you would need to fly left or right to get back on course again. We'll see this in action when we reach the next waypoint. We're coming up on the next waypoint now. When we reach it, I'll fly past it so we get off course and I can show you how to use the HSI to get back on course again. There we go, did you notice the change? The heading mark has now moved to the right and the course line is unaligned and moving away from the centre of the HSI, indicating we are no longer on the correct course. Okay, I'll make a turn to the next waypoint. See the heading mark moving around the HSI. When it's at the top, we'll be pointed towards the next waypoint again. There we are, we're now pointed to the next waypoint, but we're to the left of the course we should be flying on. We'll turn towards it, while still headed towards the waypoint. We don't want to be intercepting the course line at a right angle, but more at an angle of 30 degrees, depending on how far off the course line we are. See the course line moving back to the centre as we get back on course? Just before it reaches the centre, we'll turn back to our next waypoint heading so we don't overshoot the course line. Turning back in now. Okay, so now we're directly on course, we're headed towards our next waypoint, which is waypoint 2, directly on the course line we should be on. 
out there I've set up some course markers so we know we're on course. And while we're here, let's take a look at the hood. Here you can see which waypoint we currently have selected and the distance away from it in miles. Below that is an estimated time of arrival at that waypoint. slightly to the right, just so that all lines up nicely again. It is a very sensitive instrument, so if it's slightly off from the centre, probably only very, very slowly off the actual course line. Let's look at the hub for a moment again. See these two marks here, the triangle and the double lines beneath it? Currently, the triangle is sat on top of the double lines, which indicates we are pointing towards the next waypoint. The triangle remains stationary, pointing to the heading tape on the hood, but the double lines always point to the next waypoint. We're about to reach our next waypoint. Notice as we've passed through that waypoint, the double lines have disappeared. This is because they're now pointing to the next waypoint. Using the HUD, we can align the triangle over the double lines again to point us to the selected waypoint. Be aware, though, that this gives you no indication of whether you are on the correct course line or not. Only will tell you if you're pointing at the selected waypoint. You have to use the HSI to get yourself aligned on the course line. Go. The triangle is now centred over the double lines, indicating we're pointing towards the correct course. So we are on our correct heading. And that concludes this tutorial on navigation. Just to recap, use the HSI to fly a specific course line. The mark on the outer ring of the HSI always points to the selected waypoint. The line in the centre is your course line. If aligned in the centre, you are on the correct course. The HUD displays information about the next waypoint only, not the course line. You can see your currently selected waypoint at the time it would take to reach it here, and also whether you are flying towards it. That concludes this tutorial on navigation. I suggest you create a simple mission with a series of waypoints to follow, and then use the HSI and HUD to navigate between them. The next tutorial will be on visual landings. If you'd like to join me on that tutorial, the link will be in the description box. Thank you very much, it's been my pleasure.